long-term federal prosecutors will not bring charges in the death of Shanquella Robinson. Everyone is expecting Shanquella Robinson and her family to get the justice that they deserve as they would in the USA. But the dark truth is, according to statistics, that is most likely not the case. And today we're going to break down the reason why. I would like to thank Simply for Anna helping with the research in this video. If you're an aspiring YouTuber or someone that just needs an extra hand when it comes to research, you probably have a job and it's hard to do all that extra stuff definitely contact her because she'll be able to help you out now let's get into the first problem in Mexico it is very unlikely for a crime to be solved according to the data of the National Institution of Statistics and Geography Mexico had over 154 thousand murders between 2010 and 2016. One has been convicted. In 27 of Mexico's 32 states, the rate of cases without conviction tops 90%. Mexico has a rate of five convictions of every 100 homicide. So in Mexico, it's actually very rare for a crime to be solved. For example, where Shanquella was logged off, Baja, California, they had over 658 homicides, only 21 out of that was sentence. If we divide the unsolved homicide nationwide for 2010 to 2016 among the country's homicide prosecutors, each one would have an average of 227 cases. If we then combine the INEGI data with the force numbers reported for each state, we can estimate that an agent at the Attorney General Office solved approximately 1.8 cases a year. This means it would take Mexico's prosecutors 124 years to solve the country's backlog of homicide cases. So let's get into why is that? Why is it so low? Why is it so bad there, right? I'm gonna give you guys around three to four reasons why. Number one is bad detective and investigators. So homicide detectives or crime scene detectives I'm assuming in some cases, you don't need any qualifications as you do in the USA, according to Inside Crime. So in this article, a Laura, which is a fake name to cover up for a detective in the homicide unit of the Nueva Leon state, I probably butchered that. She never received any training on how to investigate murders, nor did she need any experience, education background to land her position as in the case in the United States or Canada. All they needed to do was assign me to the post, that was it, she said. She said the cases aren't filled or closed, but there is also no follow-up police work, just the report with the crime scene information of the victim's identification, and that's how they stay. It is no surprise in the solving homicide case in Mexico in the expectation to the rule in 27 states, including Nuevo Leon, nine in 10 crimes go unpunished. Police training is also particularly non-existent, according to the INEG. I, almost 95% of Mexico's municipalities lack a police force sufficiently trained even to secure a crime scene. And the problem did not stop there. The prosecutions of police officers interviewed reviewed that no required protocol has been approved for how to investigate a homicide and half of Mexico states do not have a prosecutor who specialize in them. Number two, the next problem is low pay. Now, according to the same article, in the 20 states of which data was obtained, police detectives have an average monthly salary of just below 14,000 pesos, approximately $740. Compared to the other countries, Mexico's detectives are poorly paid. In Brazil, for example, they earn just below $2,300 a month, which is more than double of their Mexican counterparts. In the United States, they earn around, around 8,000 nine times more. Number two, lack of skill. According to this article, police officers have it worse. They have not investigated homicides, but their function is considered vital for solving cases. According to Mexican National Criminal Code, they are responsible for securing the crime scene to prevent loss of evidence. And there is a significant shortage of police officers by at least half. And one of the major problems is that experts are lacking. So now when we're talking about this particular case with Shanquella Robinson, it took them a really long time to work out what was going on. And in fact, until the video of Shanquella getting beaten went viral on the internet. If it wasn't for that video, nothing wouldn't happen. 
Queen City News has spoken with officials at the U.S. State Department in Mexico who refute the claim that Robinson was murdered, saying the police's initial indication is that there was no clear evidence of foul play. The document of her dying from a broken neck wasn't enough. Even though Daniel De La Rosa tried to make out that they were investigating as soon as they got the autopsy, that doesn't seem likely at all. It, that seems like a straight up lie and they're embarrassed because now the video is out. They want to make it look like they are handling this situation and, and they were on top of everything when it first began. And most people are like, okay, well how come the FBI in, in the United States are not going to Mexico? How come they're not solving this? And that just does not typically happen and we're going to give you an example. Taylor Meyer, a 27 year old Caucasian man who was murdered in Mexico and till today his family still does not have justice. Taylor Meyer left from Mexico to celebrate a friend's 30th birthday. This is the last picture of the 27 year old appearing shirtless and having a good time with his friends in Playa de Carmen. On Friday his parents got a call telling them their youngest son had been murdered. First didn't believe it, you know, just this, this is just news that we thought it was a very cruel hoax, but then we confirmed it was real. Chris and Krista Meyer say their son was stabbed to death and that witnesses told police three people carried out the attack, taking his wallet, shoes, watch, and iPhone. The couple wants answers and for the FBI to investigate. We just would like the, the FBI overseeing and getting permission from the Mexican government to oversee this investigation and so that we've got clarity that we know that this is really what happened. They say their son was alone and far from where he was staying when he was killed and that Mexican authorities are trying to cover up the murder so not to scare away tourists. Good or bad, you know, we can't bring Taylor back. We just want the truth. On Sunday, 200 of Meyer's friends gathered in Hermosa Beach for a candlelight vigil to remember the fun-loving man who brought so many of them together. I was bawling with tears of joy. i had been bawling with sorrow. But he, hearing how he changed all these people's lives. They brought him back you know, to life for it. us. Next Saturday, Meyer's family is preparing a funeral at Purpose Church in Pomona, their faith helping them through their grief. We're strong Christians. We, we know Taylor's in a better place. And we raised him the right way. Now, six months after his murder, the car that he had when he was in Mexico ended up getting used in America. Now, six months later and 2,200 miles away in Oklahoma City, police say this man was caught on camera using Taylor's debit card. We think that uh, he must have forced Taylor to give up his PIN number, and uh, or someone did, because the guy attempted four different times to use the car. Taylor's father spoke with us over the phone, saying the video was captured back in December of last year and that it only came to light after he discovered the failed withdrawal attempts on bank statements. He says the card this guy used was the same one Taylor used to withdraw money in Mexico just before he was murdered and robbed. It gives me shivers to think about it, especially considering it was in this country. Mexican authorities have reported that they arrested one man for Taylor's murder months ago, the person they believe to be the main suspect. But his family thinks they want to brush the crime under the rug because Playa del Carmen is a tourist destination. Now they're urging the FBI to get involved in the interstate banking crime and find the other two people that witnesses say were involved. I forgive the people that killed my son. Certainly I want justice. I think of Taylor 24-7 and it kills me. Even though that situation happened in the States with his card, again, FBI, not involved. Now the family still haven't got any justice. As well as that, this case had much more immediate attention than Shinquella's case. And he also emailed everyone in power who could actually make a difference into getting this family justice and solving this case. The father of the son, Chris, actually has a Facebook page. He posted about Shanquella and he posts a lot about the situations that happen in Mexico. There is a lot more cases, a lot more cases of people getting murdered in Mexico and their family still do not have justice. Now, in the Shanquella Robinson case, in this situation, the FBI is involved, but not to the extent that they would typically be doing if it was in the States. 
from my understanding, the FBI is assisting the Mexican authorities getting information. I'm only assuming this because the FBI spoke to Nazir and we can confirm this through text messages with the mother. As well as that, Daniel Rosa also confirmed that there was a collaborative effort of US helping them. So I'm assuming to help them get information by interviewing Nazi and the people that they can and giving it to them. So federal prosecutors will not bring charges in the death of Shanquella Robinson. That announcement coming just minutes after federal authorities met with Robinson's family at the Charlotte FBI headquarters. In a statement from the U.S. attorney and the FBI, the Fed said there was not enough evidence to bring charges. 